Let's go now to Victoria and catch up with the opposition health spokesperson there, Georgie Crozier. Good to talk to you again, Georgia. Georgie, these, um, these revelations by the Australian newspaper and the way that even the bloke, even the public official in charge of hotel quarantine was refusing mandatory tests and breaking their protocols about vaping in a hotel quarantine environment. This is just outrageous, isn't it? Have they learned nothing? Well, Chris, you said it. It's scandalous. It's outrageous. And what has this Andrews Labor government learnt? Absolutely nothing. After all of the issues that happened last year with Victoria being in lockdown for months and months, the 801 lives lost, the economic devastation, the mental health impacts. I mean, I can really go on and we've got a massive health crisis in this state as a consequence of the extended lockdowns. And yet they, this, this man who is in charge of the really important area of infection control was breaching his, their own protocols. I mean, Victorians have been asked to do their part and have been doing their part. And yet the people who are in charge of this um, outfit haven't been doing their part and it is scandalous, it is outrageous and every single Victorian should be really, really concerned about these revelations that have come out today. Well, along with many medical professionals, I've been very critical of these lockdowns we've had recently in South Australia, Victoria, Brisbane, Perth. Uh, the one in Melbourne, of course, was across Valentine's Day. These were unnecessary given the small scale of the outbreaks. But we can see why these state governments are doing it now because they have no confidence in their own competency when it comes to controlling infection or tracking down contacts. Well, Chris, you do not lock an entire state down if you can contact trace properly and you can track and trace as you just said. You just don't do it. It hasn't happened in New South Wales. We've had so many more return travellers uh, come into New South Wales and as you said Gladys Berejiklian has been very calm and has managed um, those outbreaks I think extremely well and if only Victoria would take a few lessons from the New South Wales government I think that would give a lot more confidence to the Victorian population. But you can understand why there is a degree of nervous, nervousness out there because of these failings. And, Chris, can you imagine? I mean, the question really is, if the Australian had not uh, found uh, these secret reports and reported on it today, that same individual and these people involved in the hotel quarantine program would still be having their jobs and still be managing, breaching the protocols and goodness knows what else because... They were doing that up until just a few days ago. There were still problems within the system. So it's incredibly concerning that... Well, you, 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 you're we spot on. I hadn't yet. thought of it that way. Of course, brilliant work by you and Hannon and Damon Johnson for The Australian <laughs> uncovering all this information. If they'd not done that, as you say, the Andrews government wasn't fessing up about these mistakes. They weren't fessing up about these reports in their own system. And this bloke would still be in charge. And for all we know, some of these breaches would be going on. Correct. And, Chris, don't forget, there was one man that the Premier and the Chief Health Officer blamed for the five-day lockdown or the, the outbreak from uh, Holiday Inn, which caused the five-day lockdown. And that has been proven uh, through these documents that actually he wasn't. That was the, the nebulizer man. Yep. Um, the man using the nebulizer. It's been proven through these documents that, in actual fact, it wasn't him who caused the outbreak. Uh, it was a s extensive swabbing in an open doorway of a woman, but uh, then the air flows uh, caused massive issues. So yeah, he was a scapegoat, and he, and he said so at the time. In fact, my colleague Peter Credlin got an exclusive interview him, with him where he said he wasn't the problem, and that turns out to be correct. Just briefly, before I let you go, Georgie, the, the states have put pressure on Canberra to block the return of Australians from India. Clearly, this is part of the problem. These states, aside from New South Wales, don't have confidence in their own hotel quarantine. They're trying to shunt that resp responsibility to Canberra. So if they effectively want a quarantine system that doesn't have any infected people going into it. Uh, Chris, look, the Andrews government will blame everybody else but themselves. I mean, not one minister has lost their job over the failures and all of the disasters and the terrible, terrible situation that we experienced last year. And th this... This cover-up that has gone on, I mean, they knew about that that nebulizer man was uh, not the cause way back in March. And it was only through the work, as you said, of the journalists of the Australian that's uncovered this. And the least they can do is, is give that man an apology. And the acting Premier wouldn't even do that in the Parliament today. It is absolutely dreadful situation with what's gone on. Georgie, thanks for joining us.
Thanks, Chris. Georgie Crozier there, who's the health spokesperson for the Liberal Party for the opposition in Victoria.